the president signed into law a new anti-terrorism bill. You will lose your liberty. Sometimes the spirit becomes so powerful uh, in, a, in a place where it's like electricity. Uh, and then you think that you can't stay still. And you can't stay still. a chance for the President of the United States to use this disaster to carry out the new world order. This mass terrorism is the new evil in our world today, 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 today. Hello, I'm Alex Jones. I'm a radio and television host based in Austin, Texas. And for years, I've been exposing the criminal activities of the global elite, also known as the New World Order. My friends, throughout history, powerful people, powerful institutions have always sought to expand their control, to expand their, their hemisphere of domination, their empires. And they've always used terrorism, that is the threat of the outside enemy, as a pretext to get their population behind a war or behind giving up their liberties, behind giving up their freedoms, as a way to, you know, get behind the mother government, behind the homeland, to sacrifice. And Americans are no different. We've been manipulated many, many, many times. So now we're going to look at a few of the older examples and some of the newer examples of this, and then we'll cover what really happened on September 11th and, and who stands to gain. And I would challenge all of you out there to research the information you're about to see, because it's all true. It's all documented. In fact, in this film, we explore about 10% of the information. There is so much information out there, folks, so many documented red flag smoking gun incidences where the government carried out September 11th and other terrorist attacks that uh, I have rooms full of documents, transcripts, news articles that are all mainstream. In fact, the government never denies any of this stuff. They just put a spin on it that, oh, it's an accident, we screwed up. Well, you're gonna see today the globalists didn't screw up. They carried out these attacks. Now, I just want to spend a few minutes here, a few minutes, going over just a couple of examples uh, in the last couple thousand years of elites using terrorism that they perpetrate against themselves as an excuse, as a pretext for war as an excuse to declare war on their own people or on a foreign enemy, to consolidate and expand their power. It's called problem, reaction, solution. Create a crisis, create fear, and tell the people, give up your liberties, get behind this war, submit to the emperor, cheerlead this expansion of tyranny, and we'll protect you. And that's the siren song of dictators. It's a fraud. It's a lie. It goes against every example of history we have. And for those of you that are doubting that elites could be carrying out these type of dastardly deeds, you just don't know history. And you don't understand that power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And that there is truly nothing new under the sun. Way back. Way back, ladies and gentlemen, almost 2,000 years ago, Nero, the degenerate inbred emperor of Rome, set the city ablaze so that he could blame it on the Christians who were becoming a very popular minority in the city. He was having trouble persecuting them. The more Christians he persecuted, the more Christians uh, popped up, the more people were converted. Well, he had a very successful purge in the weeks and months after he set the city on fire. And before he committed suicide, uh, he admitted that he had set the city ablaze. And then, of course, we have some more modern examples of this. Uh, in 1898, William McKinley, Navy, uh, blew up the Maine in Havana Harbor as a pretext for war with Spain. And the United States uh, expanded its control and grabbed dozens of islands, coaling stations in the Pacific. And uh, now you read the history books and declassified documents. 
Uh, U.S. government documents, they admit that the U.S. government blew up its own ship and blamed it on the Spanish. We have Adolf Hitler in 1933, just a few months after being elected on February 27th, firebombing his own Capitol building, the Reichstag, and blaming it on his political enemies and declaring a police state crackdown for the Reich's security and announcing fatherland security, the equivalent of homeland security, and a new national police and an end of local control. Everything we're seeing, I'm about to show you the documents that's happening in 2002 into 2003. Then, of course, we have Roosevelt allowing the Japanese to attack Pearl Harbor uh, back on December 7th to get us into the war. Uh, at least Roosevelt didn't attack Pearl Harbor himself, but uh, they definitely had uh, prior knowledge. Uh, Twelve days before its declassified public document, uh, Roosevelt's White House had received the communique that Admiral Yamamoto would attack on the morning of December 7th and deal a death blow. In fact, U.S. Naval Forces destroyers sunk uh, five submarines just a mile outside uh, Pearl Harbor. They're at the mouth of the harbor. Depth charged them, uh, sunk them. Uh, they've even recovered one of them at the bottom. And when they radioed the base camp and said we're under attack, they were told to stand down. And the rest of the base was not put on alert. While a mile outside the harbor, multiple submarines are being sunk. This is all confirmed, declassified uh, public information. Think about that. The U.S. Navy, a mile outside Pearl Harbor, depth charging and sinking submarines and confirming that Japanese submarines were attacking and entering the harbor, and still the base sat there and no one put out an alert. Uh, everybody continued uh, with their uh, day off. Think about that. Here's another example. Confirmed, ladies and gentlemen, the headline from the Scotsman, U.S. prisoners claim Roosevelt left them in the Philippines deliberately. You read on deeper into the article, the prisoners don't claim the documents have been declassified. The Roosevelt uh, White House and Churchill, Winston Churchill was aware of it as well, uh, ordered the U.S. Navy, Roosevelt did, not to allow 7,000 American civilians to evacuate the Philippines despite the fact that they had over a month to do it. There were empty naval ships leaving full of uh, Navy and Marine Corps uh, personnel. But men, women, and children were left on the island. And it turns out from these documents that have now been declassified, and I interviewed the uh, the still living victims lawyer, Anthony D'Amato, on my syndicated radio show, the documents say, prepare to leave civilians there to be captured. So, the old government documents, so, think about this, 7,000 Americans, so they could use it as wartime propaganda, oh look, the Japanese have our women and children. And many of these women were raped and killed, they had their heads cut off, children were killed, the men were killed. I've talked to Vietnam veterans who were on board these ships. G Gulf of Tonkin incident might not have occurred. I love these headlines. This is out of the San Antonio Express News. Folks, it actually came out uh, back in 1964 on San Diego television. It, it just didn't get national coverage that this was a fake incident. People knew back in the 60s. Again, I've talked to Vietnam veterans who were on those ships. The Vietnamese did not attack our ships. And I'm no fan of the communist Vietnamese. The point is, it is a historical fact, ladies and gentlemen, that our ships were not actually even attacked uh, by the Vietnamese, by the communists. But again, there's this pretext for war. And 58,000 Americans died. And by the way, our own government wouldn't allow our jets and aircraft to bomb the North. And the documents have now been declassified on that because the war was about getting our servicemen addicted to heroin and it was about dredging uh, the uh, port there and it was about selling weapons. It was a war for profit and a war to demoralize the American people. Uh, and another example of problem reaction solution, and there are just thousands of these, we're going to go over a couple more, 
I see these reports all the time. Most notorious German post-war neo-Nazi was an MI6 agent. That's uh, the MI6 is the equivalent uh, of the British CIA. They're their outward-focused intelligence agencies. And uh, the most notorious neo-Nazi who almost got Nazis elected uh, in the uh, late 1960s was an MI6 agent. And just a few weeks ago, I saw other reports, the modern neo-Nazi leaders out there promoting and creating all of this to destabilize Germany so the government has an excuse to come in with more police state to deal with this problem and an excuse to attack uh, their free speech and to get rid of average Germans' free speech on other issues. They're now using the threat of the neo-Nazis and every time I look into it, every leader of these groups, even in this country, they caught the uh, FBI Cretan Klan groups back in 1998 trying to get them to blow up a chemical plant in Fort Worth, Texas. They won a bum steer award in Texas Monthly Magazine. The FBI did, which is a huge insult for criminally creating a Klan group. It's the same thing. They create the crisis, they create the threat or the perceived threat to scare you into submission. Most notorious German post-war neo-Nazi was an MI6 agent. What more do you need? Here's another one. This is the uh, Associated Press. Germany intercepts Israeli arms bound for Iran. So the Israelis have been caught selling nuclear weapons components, cruise missile parts, F-16s, radar, everything to the Iranians who are not friends, folks, but they don't care. See, World War III will only expand the globalists uh, and their power. Another, another article on that, this from the Associated Press. Germany intercepts Israeli arms bound for Iran. Disgusting, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're doubting the government would do evil things to you, think about all the things they've done. This is not our republic, folks. This is not our, our legitimate government. Our government has been hijacked. Virginia governor apologizes for eugenics law. What did the government do? United Press International. This is just one state with tens of thousands of people being sterilized from 1924 to 1979. If you came from a single parent home and made under a B plus, they would send by men in white lab coats with the police with no warrant, no conviction, no jury, no probable, no nothing, folks. This is the tyranny. This is how long our rights have been violated. It's always some new evil. You know, we get rid of slavery, 10 other evils pop up. They would take them, women, mainly women, and sterilize them. Medical students would sterilize them. Hysterectomies, cutting out the uterus of these young girls. Black, white, Hispanic, didn't matter. And then we exposed that evil. It was going on nationwide, the hundreds of thousands, the tens of thousands, just in Virginia alone, but in all, uh, all 50 states, right up until 1970s, 1979. Brutal stuff, castrating men, you name it. Margaret Sanger, you know, this big liberal, gave awards to Hitler, got awards from Hitler. How was that liberal? See, these are just terms to confuse you folks. These, these folks are elitist command and controllers. They're despots. Don't let them confuse you with different phony political terms. Now they call it bioethics, and it's still going on. And, and Child Protective Services grabs innocent children from innocent parents all the time just because they want to break up families and get hundreds of thousands of federal dollars from it. There's all these evils going on. So many evils, I couldn't cover them in 10 hours. One more example of problem, reaction, solution. Then I'm going to get into what happened uh, on September 11th, ladies and gentlemen. Government sponsored and controlled terrorism to scare you into accepting tyranny. To scare you into accepting a total police state and the federal takeover of local governments and troops on the streets. As you're going to see from mainstream news. Of course, you say, well, the mainstream's lying. Well, they don't really lie. They just throw it in your face and spin it. Tell you how good all this tyranny is. Uh, back in 1962, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, headed by L.L. L. Lemitzer, wanted to blow up ships. They said, again, like we did the main, <laughs> incredible, declassified, confirmed document. ABC News and Baltimore Sun reported on it back in April and uh, May of 2001, right before September 11th. They didn't report on it after, though. The U.S. government had a plan, the government, to blow up its own ships, to bomb Washington, D.C., to bomb the Capitol, to hijack jets full of Americans and crash them, to kill astronauts in space. John Glenn, they actually list him, let him die in space. 
attack Marines at Guantanamo Bay using Army Special Forces, Rangers, paratroopers dressed up like Cubans. Same system over and over again as a pretext for war with Cuba and the Soviet Union and for a domestic police state crackdown. The Northwoods document. And they say casualty list in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of indignation. What more do you need? A few uh, super modern examples in the 1990s. It actually came out in the New York Times that the FBI cooked the bomb and trained the driver and gave him the detonators in the World Trade Center bombing. And uh, then we saw in 1995, uh, the government that was involved in the Oklahoma City bombing, just voluminous amounts uh, of evidence there. But, but today, let's focus on September 11th and what really happened there, just some of the evidence, because there's just so many smoking guns and, and uh, red flags that would take, again, 10 hours to even cover half of it. And, and then we'll look at the whitewash of how the government carried out the September 11th attacks. So please, please stay with us and check out everything I'm about to cover and uh, visit InfoWars.com uh, because we have a government prior knowledge section there on the website that goes over all of this, uh, government prior knowledge and involvement section, and you can research and check out uh, the legislation, the news reports, the eyewitness reports, the transcripts, the interviews I've done with FBI agents and victims lawyers, uh, and uh, David Shippers, the man that impeached Bill Clinton, who said the government had prior knowledge and he tried to warn Bush, and uh, Ashcroft, and, and, the in and my interviews with Judicial Watch, and Larry Klayman saying the government uh, had prior knowledge. Just all of this information, a lot more we can cover here, and the two previous films I've made and, and uh, the, the book I've written uh, about September 11th are all online uh, at InfoWars.com. I know this stuff is painful. I know it's hard to believe, but look at history. Is it any surprise? Uh, the point is we've got to speak out, we've got to say no, because the government's telling us give up our liberty for security. But throughout history, anybody that gives up liberty gets tyranny. They don't get security. Uh, Hitler promised security if people give up their rights. Stalin promised security if the people will give up their rights. Pol Pot promised security the people give up their rights. But all they got was death and destruction. All they got was slavery, feudalism. America is dying, folks, and you've got to speak up. You can't count on somebody else to do it. All right, let's go ahead now and get into the evidence of government prior knowledge, but not just prior knowledge, involvement in September 11th. Because if they just say it's prior knowledge, well, then they say, oh, we screwed up. Give us triple the funding, triple the money, and uh, give us more power, get rid of your Bill of Rights, get rid of your Constitution. And I just want to point out that back in 95, after the Oklahoma City bombing, that tragedy, they passed the Anti-Terrorism Effective Death Penalty Act, and they got triple the funding then, and it eviscerated large sections of the Bill of Rights and Constitution. Did we see less terrorism after 95? No, we saw an escalation of terrorism after 1995. Look at what happened on September 11th. And now we've given them all this new power and all this new funding uh, with Homeland Security and with what's developed uh, with the USA Patriot Act that it's the complete opposite of it's what, what, a, what a patriot would do. I think George Washington and Benjamin Franklin and uh, Thomas Jefferson, in fact, I know they must be rolling in their graves. They're probably having convulsions down there of anger. Imagine what Patrick Henry thinks about this. Give me liberty or give me death. We didn't get freedom. We didn't get security. We didn't get happiness and safety after we gave them more power. You give the intelligence agencies more power and more control, do they really have an incentive to stop the terrorism? No, they have an incentive to engineer the terrorism, and that's what happened on September 11th. So let's go through the evidence of prior knowledge and involvement. See, they had to come out with this news of, okay, we did have prior knowledge because we're a bunch of buffoons because all this evidence came out. So they said, oh, it's an accident we let the attack take place. Our government funded, trained, protected. Why, they founded Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. So we'll look at the evidence of prior knowledge and involvement. Then we'll look at the ensuing whitewash. Then we'll look at what they're getting out of the terrorist attacks. 
Coming up with this information that it admits it did warn the proper authorities before September 11th of a hijacking plot that was linked to Osama bin Laden. We are looking into this. Trying to get Tonight, the White House is confirming a report that the CIA director told President Bush before September 11th that there was a chance that someone connected to Osama bin Laden might hijack a U.S. airliner. Now, this any story, there was no suspicion that they would take those hijacked airplanes and ram them in the building. Well, that's not so. As a matter of fact, even Al-Qaeda uh, reports from the CIA back in the mid-90s indicated that they intended to take a plane and ram it into the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And Murad had discussed with Youssef the possibility of crashing a plane into an American government building. He will board any American commercial aircraft pretending to be an ordinary passenger. He will hijack said aircraft, control its cockpit and dive it at the CIA headquarters. It is simply a suicidal mission that he is willing to execute. There is no question uh, that the Intelligence Committee and the Congress uh, and the administration um, had reason to suspect that uh, hijackings were a possibility. I don't think anybody knew that it would possibly be used as a, a, you know, a missile aimed into a high-rise building. There was a suspicious activity there, and the handwritten notes of at least one FBI agent indicated that they were speculating, they were brainstorming. They said, well, maybe this guy's uh, uh, out to ram a plane into the World Trade Center. You kind of put all that together and you start to get a picture. There was no time, there was no place, uh, there was no method of attack. It simply said, uh, these are people who train um, and uh, seem to, to talk possibly about hijackings. And had this president known of something more specific or known that a plane was going to be used as a missile, he would have acted on it. The vice president deciding to add a paragraph to his speech, echoing those comments from Dr. Rice, saying any suggestion that this president had any specific knowledge about the September 11th attack is ludicrous. I remember being on the radio in the late 1990s and seeing reports every year of plans by Al-Qaeda to fly hijacked jet airliners into landmarks like the Capitol, CIA headquarters, the World Trade Center, the Sears Tower in Chicago. So when I saw George Bush on television saying they had never heard of plans to hijack aircraft, and then the news came out that they had gotten the actual plans that Al-Qaeda was planning to do that, so he said, okay, well, we never knew they'd fly them into buildings. And I'm like, excuse me, I probably saw 20, 30 reports that I covered on air, mainstream, years before September 11th, where Al-Qaeda was planning uh, just these uh, type of events. Of course, I didn't know that Al-Qaeda was training at secure U.S. military bases. That later came out, but it's just been swept under the rug. Uh, this is CNN. U.S. warned in 95 of plot to hijack planes, attack buildings. Why, even in the Genoa, Italy uh, summit a year before September 11th. I remember they had anti-aircraft guns on top of their buildings there. And they said, oh, Al-Qaeda's got a plan to fly planes into buildings. They just arrested a couple of them, uh, they said on the news, before September 11th, uh, in Paris with plans to fly to the Eiffel Tower. But here in America, we still have guns. We still have private property. We still have some sovereignty. And we're giving them a heck of a fight when it comes to defending this republic. People were standing up against Big Brother, so they had to carry this out. Here's another one. Fox News, U.S. knew of suicide hijack plan threat in 1995 from Ramsey Yosef, who was caught trying to carry out attacks in the Philippines on aircraft taking off, flying to the U.S. And I interviewed police and FBI agents who were involved in busting this guy before September 11th, and they said an attack on America was right around the corner. In fact, later, in a few minutes, we'll show you a clip of myself on my local TV show you know, just an average show, a little bit disheveled and working hard, uh, just up there warning the people that the government was going to allow a terrorist attack and that they were going to use their CIA asset, Osama bin Laden. I went into even more detail on my radio show. I put out the phone numbers for the White House, for Congress. I said, call them. Don't let them use their assets to attack us as a pretext for control. Here's another one. Bush told of threat before September 11th, London Guardian. And again, I got like 50 reports on this story. Bush told a threat before September 11th. But how many times did they tell you, after they knew all these reports were out, that they'd never heard of such a thing? They're lying to you. 
Here's another one. Associated Press. Bush warned of hijack threat before September 11th. What more do you need? Well, don't worry. There's a lot more coming up. Bush knew of hijack threat and did nothing. You're going to learn he actually signed a document ordering the FBI not to stop Al-Qaeda, threatening dozens of senior FBI agents from Arizona to Chicago to Minnesota to Florida to D.C. to Boston not to stop Al-Qaeda, not to stop no members of bin Laden's CIA organization. Oh, you doubt me? Go to the microfilm at your local library, type in Osama bin Laden, 1985. You'll see Wall Street Journal articles, uh, Washington Post articles about how wonderful bin Laden is and how he loves the Bushes and how they vacation together. Oh, yeah, that came out in the FBI press conference, by the way, the Bushes, Judicial Watch press conference with FBI agents about how the Bushes like to, like to vacation with bin Laden. And in particular, this Bush administration, uh, who is as tight with Saudi Arabia as you can get. The president's father used to stay with the bin Laden family when he would go to Saudi Arabia. But here it is, folks. Bush knew of hijack threat, CBS News. Hijackers trailed by CIA before attacks. You see, not only did they know the attack was coming and do nothing, well, he didn't just do nothing. Bush actually, I'm sorry, proactively signed an order ordering FBI not to stop him. He, he did do something. He proactively made sure they attack us. Uh, they also had the CIA follow Al-Qaeda out of the country to a Malaysian summit in Malaysia and follow them back into the country. They also, they were having trouble getting back in, the members of Al-Qaeda. The CIA pressured the head of the embassy to get them visas to get back into the country. London Guardian. And again, for every report I'm showing you, there's 20 others backing this up. And the government never denied this. This got leaked by Congress, by some patriots in Congress, and so now they're threatening to arrest members of Congress if they don't shut up and stop leaking this. Hijackers were trailed by CIA before attacks. Let me just read from this. Two of the hijackers who crashed American Airline Flight 77 in the Pentagon were spotted as potential terrorists by the CIA more than 18 months before September 11th. Newsweek reported yesterday, it called this the most puzzling and devastating intelligence failures in the period before the attacks. The magazine reports they followed them out and followed them back in to Los Angeles and did nothing with the information. Yeah, actually helped them get back in. Another one, MSNBC. The hijackers we let escape. The CIA tracked two suspected terrorists of Al-Qaeda summit in Malaysia in January 2000 then looked on as they re-entered America and began preparations for September 11th. And they call this the worst intelligence failure. Bush went to the CIA. A lot of you saw this on television. Everybody thought, ooh, he's going to fire somebody. He went to the CIA. They stood around the eagle there on the marble. Three-minute standing ovation. They were smiling. They were celebrating because they get to act domestically now. They get to run your local departments. They get to get into all the fun and be mob bosses over us now, folks. Total degeneracy, total tyranny. Unbelievable. MSNBC. The hijackers we let escape. Does that not infuriate you? 99 report. Warned of suicide. Hijack plan. U.S. government plan. Uh, put out a report saying that Osama bin Laden was preparing to fly hijacked jet airliners in the World Trade Center, CIA headquarters, the Capitol, the list goes on and on. That's the Associated Press. Unheeded warnings. FBI agents' notes pointed to possible World Trade Center attack. He was told to shut up by superiors. MSNBC. But they always tell you, oh, it was just an accident. Just an accident. And it says these FBI agents... J joked. That, that's the headline, but I've talked to FBI agents in person. They weren't joking when they said, it's like Al-Qaeda runs the FBI. And I said to him over the phone, I said, it isn't like Al-Qaeda runs the FBI. The FBI, through the CIA and the big central banks that founded the CIA, read your history books, they run Al-Qaeda. Get the full horror straight in your minds. Bush held up plan to hit bin Laden. You know, they had battle plans on their desk. They had tens of thousands of U.S. and British troops massing publicly in Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. 
I say publicly, I mean, it was out in the foreign press, but total news blackout here, they were doing it covertly, but it was still out uh, publicly in the foreign press, to invade Afghanistan. And Bush held up plan to hit bin Laden. He had it on his desk two days before already, and had already signed it, but was it to be released till September 12th. U.S. plan for an attack on Al-Qaeda, White House given strategy two days before September 11th. Again, MSNBC. But they say, oh, it's all just a big accident and a big coincidence. Yeah, wait, we haven't even gotten to the information yet. NSA intercepts on EVO 911 sent a warning. Messages translated after attacks. Washington Post. Uh, you read on to the articles about this. They got warnings a month before. They got warnings a week before. They got warnings a day before. This is just one of the articles of the plan to fly aircraft into the World Trade Center. And you just saw the reports they got back in 95. The reports they got back in 96, 97, 98, 99, 2000. I was all over the radio saying this. Everybody was. Everybody knew about this. Oh, but they didn't. Oh, they just got the intercept the day before and didn't, you know, decipher it. This is a shill story. You know why? Because good people in government were blowing the whistle. Air Force colonels, Air Force captains, Army captains, Army generals, FBI agents. And so they put up the spin. Oh yeah, there were some warnings day before we missed it. And, the, and that gets announced nationwide. Then when you tell your neighbor about this, they go, yeah, they missed it. Here's another one. September 11th probe, wiretaps in Italy. Uh, hear parrot talk of terrifying plan by madmen, AP. Air Force officer suspended after charge. Bush knew of 911 threat. It wasn't a charge. I've interviewed his lawyer, Mr. Hilton, who's talked to hundreds of these officers. This was the dean of the defense language school that trained spies in Monterey, California. You know why he was angry? He was ordered to train Mohammed Atta and two of the other supposed hijackers. The fall guys, the patsies, that's what they were. They were playing a part. Knight Ritter News Papers. This Air Force officer, Lieutenant Colonel Steve Butler, said that Bush was behind the attacks and orchestrated the attacks so he could have a war for global domination and a police state. Again, here's a report out of the uh, Herald newspaper there on the West Coast. The Monterey County Herald. DLJ official removed for criticizing Bush. And you read on. Uh, then I interviewed the lawyer who represents 400 uh, families of the victims, 400 families. San Francisco attorney Bush allowed 911. I interviewed uh, Stanley Hilton on my syndicated radio broadcast for two hours. He's not some left winger out to get Bush, neither is Judicial Watch, you know, exposing Bush for prior knowledge and involvement with FBI agent Robert Wright and David Chippers, the man that impeached Bill Clinton. Uh, this guy was former Bob Dole's Chief of Staff. <laughs> this is out of the San Francisco Examiner. San Francisco Attorney Bush allowed 911. And then he goes into details. He has filed a class action suit against 10 defendants, including Vice President Dick Cheney, National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice, uh, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld, Transportation Secretary Norman Mineta, saying that they engineered the attacks. And I interviewed him. Uh, he says that his sources within the FBI, CIA, National Security Agency, Naval Intelligence, and Air Force, and others, say that NORAD was ordered to stand down that the U.S. government engineered the attacks. Bob Dole's former chief of staff. But first, is President Bush to blame for the September 11th attacks? A $7 billion lawsuit filed recently in federal co court alleges that the president and several other high-ranking administration officials allowed the terrorist attacks to happen. Joining us now is the lawyer who filed this ridiculous suit is Stanley Hilton. You know something? You know what's so sinister, Mr. Hilton, in what you're doing here? There is no evidence. There's no evidence, no specifics, no times. The president never saw the two memorandum that you talk of. You got some cons conspiratorial kook that you have feeding you information that doesn't know the president, never gave it to him here. But we're at a, right now, this country's at war against terror. And it's a serious war, and people's lives are in jeopardy, and you're distracting the president, you're distracting the White House, you're distracting the country for your own selfish grandizement in this particular case. It's a disgrace what you're doing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. You have no evidence, and you ought to pull it back. That's what you well, ought to do if you're a good American. 
Well, you know, that sounds to me like something that Adolf Hitler's regime when the Reichstag burned oh, in Oh, give me a break. That's well, so let me, ridiculous. Now, how do you be know, ashamed right, of yourself. Hilton, and how do you know I have no evidence? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. dime license that you got to practice law. Hold on a second. Law, I'm up. Because what you're doing is Mr. hurting Hilton, the country. I, uh, and I don't know why you folks are so afraid of facing the facts. How do you know he's not we guilty? We were afraid. He wouldn't Mr. have put you on. Mr. Hilton, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. The nation's well, at I war. Th I think I should be proud of myself. The nation's at war. You give lawyers a bad name with this frivolous, superfluous suit. Who's the enemy? You want to depose the president with you yes. have no evidence it's a disgrace we're at war well, you ought to be a patriot you ought to back up your country and you ought to be ashamed of yourself i am a patriot i'm defending the yeah. constitution of the united states something that bush and others don't want right. to do they want to tear this constitution to pieces uh, because right. they claim right. they're we're, defending we got to move on we're what are they from one ridiculous story to the next my friends i could spend an hour on each one of these reports these confirm reports no one is refuting this every time the government gets caught they say it's an accident how is this an accident? This is from the Associated Press. Agency was to crash plane on 911. In what the CIA describes as bizarre coincidence, the U.S. intelligence agency was planning an exercise on September 11, 2001, in which a hijacked jet aircraft is flown into the World Trade Center. Ladies and gentlemen, again, agency was to crash plane on 9-1-1. Here's another AP article. Agency plan exercise on September 11th built around a plane crashing into a building. That's right. It says right outside DC at the CIA headquarters, they were running an exercise of flying jet aircraft into buildings. And I talked to Professor Tex Mars, space and aeronautics professor, former Air Force uh, officer, who was a UT professor, retired now, and he agreed with me. In fact, I called him to see if he agreed, and I said, we know that there are these hundreds of Air Force officers and NORAD and CIA and other folks like the Air Force Colonel that are aware that the government was guiding in the aircraft, NORAD was involved. They just had these Arabs to be seen at the scenes, you know, at the airports as patsies, as fall guys, and, and, and had trained them at U.S. military bases. So, now that all these Air Force and, and Army intelligence and, and the CIA people are angry, who were compartmentalized and go, wait a minute, why were they running so-called simulations of planes crashing into buildings on September 11th? And, 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 you know, why did our government send money to the Taliban and Al-Qaeda? And, you know, uh, why did all these government officials get warnings not to fly? That's coming up. Why was Bush on Cipro, the anthrax fighting antibiotic? They had gotten leaks of how the government was actually guiding the aircraft into the buildings, which is old remote control technology that's a standard on a lot of these Boeing aircraft now. That's all confirmed. How do you then cover things up where if somebody in the Air Force or the Army blows the whistle on this, then they're discredited because the government's gotten out ahead of the story, leaked it itself with their spin on it. And that's not just our opinion, it's clear. We had all these military officers and CIA people leaking, uh, dozens of them, FBI agents and others, going public, this Air Force colonel going public, saying that this was the fact. But that was getting small, you know, small levels of press around the country. And then this big press story, oh yeah, we were running a simulation, guys. You were just confused. That's what you saw. It was just a drill. It's the same MO over and over again. You know, oh, the terrorist attacked us. We had prior knowledge because we're idiots. Oh, yeah, we were running a simulation there at headquarters of uh, planes flying into the Pentagon and World Trade Center, but that was just a simulation that morning, guys. And we're supposed to buy that. Millions of Americans have been asking a very important question. Remember back in 1999, Payne Stewart, the famous golfer, his jet got off course just for 21 minutes and was already surrounded by F-16 jet aircraft in 21 minutes. But a year or two later, in September 11th, they had 70 plus minutes to get jet scrambled. And they didn't do a thing. Simultaneously, within two minutes of each other, four jet aircraft in the same area of the country turned off their transponders. That is an emergency happening at any time of the year when even one jet does it. But instead, four jets turn off their transponders almost simultaneously and nothing is done. At least that's what the FAA and NORAD claim. We know that the FBI and Defense Intelligence have gone in and grabbed all of those uh, control tower tapes. So we need to ask this important question. We need to get answers. Why was NORAD and the FAA ordered to stand down? 
because that's the information we're getting from top-level military officers. Andrews Air Force Base is only 10 miles from the Pentagon. Air defense around Washington is provided mainly by fighter planes from Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland near the District of Columbia border. The D.C. Air National Guard is also based there and equipped with F-16 fighter planes. In a blatant reversal of standard operating procedure, the Air Force, via willful negligence, is given stand-down orders not to intercept Flight 77, which will subsequently hit the Pentagon. This is all reported in mainstream news, but no one puts the pieces together. No one connects the dots of what's blatant criminal activity. Flight 77 is known by NORAD to have been hijacked by 8.50 a.m., yet it is still a full 48 minutes until any jet fighters are scrambled as two leave Langley Air Force Base just two minutes before Flight 77 hits the Pentagon at 9.40 a.m. Andrews Air Force Base has two combat-ready squadrons which would have intercepted Flight 77 had they been allowed to leave upon confirmation of its hijacking. It is standard operating procedure to intercept all air traffic that fails to respond to radio calls immediately. Of course, we just talked about the fact that that was the case with the golfer Payne Stewart's chartered Learjet that crashed in October of 99. F-16 fighter jets, without the need of the presidential mandate, had intercepted the aircraft within 21 minutes. This represents willful coordinated negligence between the FAA, NORAD, and the Pentagon, who also track all aircraft, and President Bush, who, as this was unfolding, was reading a book about a pet goat to a group of school children. Treason, ladies and gentlemen, treason. In Oklahoma City, the governor, uh, Frank Keating's uh, brother, wrote a book called The Final Jihad. It was published about a year and a half, two years before the Oklahoma City bombing, where a Tom McVeigh bombs the Oklahoma City building. And then on top of that, as if that isn't enough, he dedicates the book to the Knights of the Secret Circle. Now that's what Albert Pike, the founder of the Klan, called the Illuminati. That's what uh, Aleister Crowley called it. That's what the Illuminati, a public you know, group, their books are public. A lot of their members are secret, presidents and others. Now this sounds bizarre, but just a fact. On March 4th, 2001, the lone gunman, pilot number 1A EB-79, on Fox, it ran for about a year after the X-Files, a secret government group wants to hijack jet airliners and fly them into the World Trade Center to get martial law and to be able to smart bomb any third world country they want. This is out on Fox months before. And again, it's not a coincidence. We've got the CIA running these so-called drills, flying planes into buildings. Uh, by the way, back in November of uh, 2000, the District of Columbia Military Defense Forces, the group that protects the Pentagon, ran a drill where a hijacked jet airliner is flown into the Pentagon. And remember, Bush and everybody else said, we'd never heard of a plan to fly planes into buildings when we got this hijacker alert, because it got leaked out of Congress that the president had these briefings that he won't declassify, and so there's plans to fly planes into buildings. So Bush tried to spin it and lied, but it's obvious the Pentagon was running drills Pentagon Protective Services, where planes are flying in out of the building, hijacked jet airliners. So it's just amazing. Also, what was happening on September 11th? The founder of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda, the man in the 80s who was still running Pakistani intelligence uh, that publicly runs Afghanistan, uh, Pakistani chief and spy general Mahud Ahmad wired $100,000 to Muhammad Atta, the lead hijacker. Source, Washington Post, uh, New York Times, you name it. They say this is all coincidental, of course. He wires $100,000 to Muhammad Atta, who at the time is training at the Pensacola Naval Air uh, Base on large jet aircraft on refueling planes. Now again, uh, were they really on board the aircraft? Uh, we don't know. Uh, we just know that the government was intimately involved in their uh, in their training and that they were seen and videotaped men that looked like them at the airports. But what we do know is this uh, general, this Pakistani spy chief, is here in the United States after he wires $100,000 to the so-called head hijacker, uh, Muhammad Atta. They're in the United States, and he's not just in the United States, this top general, 
this founder of Al-Qaeda and Taliban, this boss of bin Laden, admitted in 100 news stories before September 11th, the CIA minion. Where is he? He is in D.C., and not just in D.C., he's at the Capitol the morning of September 11th eating breakfast with the heads of the House and Senate Intelligence Committee, including uh, Representative Porter Goss, Republican, and Senator Bob Graham, a Democrat, meeting with the two heads of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, eating breakfast as the jet aircraft fly into the buildings. Again, this is my source on this. I've got New York Times. I've got Washington Post. I, I, I've got everything in here. I mean, you just got to go to InfoWars.com and go to the prior knowledge section. And just take your time. Spend a Saturday afternoon, four or five hours. Look at this for yourself. Please listen to me. There's no way to cover all this. Here's another one from Friends of Liberty. A great analysis right off Boeing's website. Uh, it turns out that uh, Boeing 767s and 757s uh, can only fly at the G's reported of 6.5 to 7 G's when they're under remote control. Then only 767s and 757s come standard with remote control global hawk type systems that uh, only NORAD pilot and control. They have a fly by wire system in them where you can only, uh, a pilot can only fly them with the controls at 1.5 G's. That's in case they hit a gust or turbulence and he bumps into the stick, the plane doesn't you know, break grandma's neck. Uh, and this is a detailed report. Again, you really should go to InfoWars.com and uh, you can uh, read the entire report for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Now here's where it gets really serious. FBI claims Bin Laden inquiry was frustrated. And in my book, I have portions of this declassified, it was never declassified, it was leaked document to the BBC. And I interviewed uh, BBC top Newsnight investigative reporter, Greg Pallas, who interviewed some of the chiefs uh, top folks there at the FBI, who are now dead, of course. Uh, John O'Neill, deputy FBI director who leaked this months before, uh, was found dead on September 11th. His uncharred body found in the rubble of the World Trade Center. And he also talked to the foreign press before he died, mainstream foreign press, and said the government's going to allow bin Laden to attack for a pretext for war to get an oil pipeline. Uh, Bush took FBI agents off bin Laden family trail. America was itself to blame for the events of September 11th because the U.S. administration was using clint gloves in tracking down Osama bin Laden and other fanatics linked to Saudi Arabia. A special BBC investigation has reported in a damning indictment of the two President Bushes and American foreign policy. The report, which the BBC reported, is numbered 199 eyes only. WF213589 emanating out of the FBI's Washington field office. John O'Neill died to report this information to you. FBI Deputy Director John O'Neill released this before resigning, and then he was murdered and his uncharred body thrown into the wreckage of the World Trade Center, and one of the supposed hijackers' passports was found laying right next to him. That was reported by the New York Times. But they don't say there's any conspiracy here. It's all coincidental. Uh, that, the, uh, that this happened. FBI and uh, U.S. spy agents say Bush spiked bin Laden probes before September 11th. Here's uh, from Greg Palace BBC uh, website. You can go to my website and read a transcript of my interview with him and all the documents. Uh, here's another one. Uh, FBI claims bin Laden inquiry was frustrated. U.S. agents told to back off bin Ladens by George W. Bush. U.S. agents told to back off bin Ladens. See, we could spend all night on these reports. We could spend all night on them. This is all confirmed. Bush thwarted FBI probe against bin Laden from AFP Newswire out of London. Again, AFP, ladies and gentlemen. Bush thwarted FBI probe against bin Laden. Here's another one out of the uh, French news agency and French radio confirming, interviewing dozens of eyewitnesses. Bin Laden treated for kidney disorder in Dubai. Report. Osama bin Laden for 10 days met from July 4th to July 14th with the CIA section chief in Dubai. Uh, he had flown by air out of Quetta, Pakistan to the uh, south of Saudi Arabia to meet in Dubai with the CIA section chief while he was on uh, kidney dialysis for 10 days, hospital officials reported. A lot of this even came out in the foreign news before September 11th. Why is this wanted guy that supposedly bombed the coal and bombed these embassies, why is he uh, there uh, 
uh, at the U.S. hospital. It's, co it's, it's called the American Hospital because it's mainly for Americans there in Dubai and it's people by American uh, doctors. This is the French News Agency. French News Agency. Bin Laden treated for kidney disorder in Dubai. Meeting with the CIA. The Washington Times also reported that. Armed pilots banned two months before 911. Did you know pilots could be armed before that? Oh yeah. FAA rescinded rule allowing guns and cockpits just before terror attacks. Another FBI agent blows the whistle. New evidence the Bureau quashed another terror probe before 911. This with Robert Wright. And Robert Wright got up there on C-SPAN and cried and said, I have been told not to talk about what I know or I'll be arrested. And he said, why can Kathleen Rowley be praised for doing that, but I can't? This from LA Weekly. Because she's a shill. When you got all these real FBI agents and Air Force colonels and CIA and deputy FBI directors that have gone public, you ignore them when they pop up at one or two local papers, that story gets killed and shut down. You have a Rowley pop up who puts out some whitewash of, yeah, we're inept, give us more funding and power and we won't do this anymore. Here's a report out of American Free Press, Come Fly With Me. It was also reported in the Detroit Press and uh, New York Times and Newsweek. Uh, but, but they reported it first. A Saudi flying instructor who died mysteriously on May 8th had the same name as two 911 hijackers who lived at the same U.S. Naval Air Base. Remember 911 supposed hijacker Saeed al -Amidi? Remember him? Well, it turned out there were a whole bunch of other al Hamidis at the Pensacola Naval Air Station training in some top secret program uh, by Royal Saudi Air Force Major Ambarak S. Almidi had continued to remain in his position at the Pensacola Naval Air Station as a flight instructor after 9-1-1 attacks, notwithstanding his Saudi government ties and that most of the terrorists were Saudis. A story broke on CNN on September 11, 2002 that not only had the FBI had informants inside the hijackers' homes, but they'd also been their landlords. So let me put this all together. We got the head of Pakistani intelligence, this general, a known CIA officer, sending $100,000 to the supposed lead hijacker, Mohammed Adab. These guys are trained at the Pensacola Naval Air Station, the hijackers. They're also trained at the Monterey Defense Language School to be spies in a top secret U.S. government program now released. And on top of it, other hijackers have FBI informants living with them who are also their landlords. Funding, training, protecting, shepherding, Al-Qaeda, it never ends. You couldn't write a science fiction movie this bizarre. On September 7th, the British Broadcasting Company, the BBC, dropped another bombshell. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Taliban warned U.S. of huge attack. One of their top envoys specifically gave information to the U.S. Embassy and called the White House telling them that Al-Qaeda was going to attack New York with hijacked jet airliners on September 11th. What did the U.S. government do when they got control of Afghanistan? They arrested the Taliban minister that had issued them the detailed warning. And it made perfect sense for the Taliban. Why on earth would they want someone to attack the U.S. and bring the wrath of the New World Order down upon them? Again, it's common sense. Who has the motive here? And then the evidence. Think about that. Our government knew the attack was coming, had been warned by the Taliban and nothing was done, and then when the globalists take over Afghanistan, they arrest the man that warned them? Yeah, you got to keep control of witnesses like that. Well, freedom, justice, and a world rid of terrorism are just some of the stated aims for Operation Enduring Freedom. But is there another reason for bombing Afghanistan, with worldwide demand for oil increasing and some of the Gulf states looking very vulnerable? The U.S. is desperate to tap the oil fields of Kazakhstan and other central states. And as ITN's economic correspondent, Leon Halligan, now explains, Afghanistan is key when it comes to moving that oil to the West. The September the 11th atrocity sparked a coalition. A crusade, said George Bush, for freedom and justice. But take a closer look. There's an important subtext to the struggle over Afghanistan, oil. Over the last few years, you may have read that the West, and particularly the US, is becoming less oil dependent. But it's just not true. Back in the 70s, the US used 16 million barrels every day. Today, that's ballooned to 22 million, making America by far the world's biggest oil importer. The European Union used 12 million barrels a day 30 years ago, 
but now it's 15 million. And oil's not just used for petrol for cars. Right now, you're watching a television made of plastic, presumably in a well-warmed room, and probably wearing man-made fibers. And all thanks to oil. So where does it all come from? Saudi Arabia, of course, is the biggest exporter. Over 7 million barrels every day. Iran, Iraq, and Kuwait are big players too. But don't forget the former Soviet Union, which exports almost 4.5 million barrels daily. Apart from Russia, it's these newly independent Central Asian states, particularly Kazakhstan, that are key. Already 20 billion barrels of oil reserves have been found in Kazakhstan, and there could be much more. The oil and gas so far discovered in these parts is worth $3 trillion in today's prices. That's why Western money men are so interested in getting this oil to world markets. It's also important in this film to look at motive. Dick Cheney's company, Halliburton, that he's CEO from 95 to 2000, is now building the giant trans-Afghan pipeline that will carry hundreds of billions of dollars of oil to the West, markets begging for black gold. Then, of course, there's also opium, the second largest opium reserves in the world, huge poppy belts in Central Asia centering around Afghanistan, hundreds of billions of dollars more that the globalists stand to gain by controlling this vital region. But it's not just about oil and opium, it's about being able to attack any country by simply claiming that they are harboring terrorists. This is the pretext empire needs to invade dozens of lands. In fact, the White House has told us this war won't last decades, it won't last generations, it will last hundreds of years. They've said that on the record. But that's just internationally, oil, opium, war. It's also internationally about selling weapons, the Carlyle Group and the Bushes. In fact, that's why on September 11th, while all other air traffic was grounded, the Bin Laden family was flying out via their private jets from Boston and Miami because they're intimate business partners with George W. Bush and his CIA director father. By the way, the Carlyle Group's gone from the number fifth largest defense contractor in the world to the largest defense contractor in the world in only a matter of months after September 11th. But if that isn't enough motive for you, weapons, oil, opium, being able to start these wars, to sell the weapons, if that isn't enough for you, let's look at the domestic reasons. A massive police state crackdown, a cashless society control grid. Homeland Security taking control of the states and annihilating the Tenth Amendment. The president was in Florida when word of the attacks first broke. Reading with a group of elementary students, Mr. Bush was stopped cold when his chief of staff delivered the news. One of the most compelling images that Americans have ingrained and printed on their minds from September 11th in 2001 was President Bush giving the little goat story to the elementary school students in Florida. Andrew Carr, the chief of staff, walks in, tells him the president looks grave, and then we were told in the news that that's when the president first learned that anything was amiss. Later, at a uh, press dinner, Bush told the news media that, oh, indeed, he had seen the first building struck by the aircraft, that he saw the first aircraft actually strike the building. People said, well, how could that be? For the first few weeks, that video was not even known to exist. And we'd heard that he didn't hear about it until the second building had been hit. In fact, that's what they told us. The White House press secretary had reported that. Well, then suddenly it got leaked that there were photos of the president watching uh, the first building uh, on fire before the second aircraft hit. When that got published in the Times of London, suddenly they changed their story yet again that, oh, yes, they really had uh, seen the first building smoking point is, why would they lie about that? Why would they claim that he first learned from Andrew Card while reading the little goat story to the school children, then change it back again and go back again and go back again? Endless lying, endless deception. What we know is this. This is the fact. That was a staged event with President Bush supposedly learning of the tragic events of September 11th while reading the story to the elementary students. That way you could already be tuned in to the tragedy and you could see the president learn of it after you knew. It was a great moment of bonding with you and our new hereditary dictator, King George II. A trade center warning baffles police. Now, I remember hearing that the schools were half empty nearby the World Trade Center. The building was two-thirds empty uh, for the capacity. Normally that time of morning there were 30,000 people in the building. Uh, by afternoon, 50,000. 
there were only 3,000 and 500 of those were firefighters and valiant police. There have been hundreds of reports, confirmed reports, that people were worn out to go to work that day. The building was almost completely empty uh, and it should have been uh, half full at that time of day. So Newsweek and MSNBC tried to go out and disprove that. And the headline is, Trade Center Warning Baffles Police. An urban myth turns out to be true, but what does it mean? Right here. I went to Brooklyn this week in search of an urban myth about the World Trade Center attacks. What I came back with was no longer a myth. It was cold, chilling fact. People have been warned not to go to work again. Uh, here's another one. This is the Times of London, September 27th, Bin Laden's trail. The author, Salman Rushdie, uh, was warned, and they called the FAA, the Times of London did, was warned the month before and banned from flying commercially for the month of September for his safety because there's a fatwa, a hit out on him, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a contract is out on him publicly from Iran. Times of London, September 27th, Salman Rushdie told not to fly. Times of London. Now here's another one. Instant messages to Israel warned of World Trade Center attacks. See, that's, that's not a rumor. The Israeli firm uh, Odigo confirmed today uh, that uh, their employees received text messages warning hours before to get out of the buildings that they were going to be destroyed. Young children told police and their teachers a week before, those buildings will be knocked down next week. Again, I was on television saying that bin Laden's a CIA asset and looks like he'll attack New York. Saying, call Washington, tell him to call off the attack. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad uh, that you could join us today for this Wednesday, July 25th, 2001 broadcast. Tyranny is enveloping the globe, and the United States is a shining jewel the globalists want to bring down, and they will use terrorism as the pretext to get it done. So that's coming up in the second half of the show. Very important information. I'm going to put the call out that you call the White House and tell them, look, we've seen the news stories that you've wanted to blow things up, that you have blown things up, and that you're saying that four million of us are going to die and we need martial law and the Associated Press at one of your little drills you had, and that we're aware of who the terrorists are if you pull this. This can stop this Hitlerian Reichstag event. I want to put the toll-free number up for Congress. And I won't want you to believe Alex Jones. I want you to go get these news stories off my website. I want you to call these major newspapers. I want you to find out these statements were true by the White House about preparing for martial law. And I want you to let them know that if there is any terrorism, we know who to blame. The point is, if any terrorism comes, it's from this government. And if there was an outside threat like a bin Laden, who was a known CIA asset in the 80s, running the Mujahideen War, and whose family builds all the military bases over in Saudi Arabia right now, and sits on the board of Iridium Satellite, he's the boogeyman they need in this Orwellian phony system. I want the White House numbers up there now. A big part of this solution, after you research all the government terrorism and check out what I'm saying is true, call the White House and tell them, we know the government's planning terrorism. We know Oklahoma City and World Trade Center was terrorism. We know the Joint Chiefs of Staff wanted to blow up airliners, Baltimore Sun. If you do it, we're going to blame you because we know who's up to it. Or if you let some terrorist group do it, like the World Trade Center, we know who to blame. And you could save the planet. I'm calling it Operation Expose the Government Terrorist. Willie Brown got low-key early warning about air travel. San Francisco Chronicle, September 12th. Low-key says the FAA called him the day before and told him don't fly to New York for your safety. In July, the Attorney General John Ashcroft quit flying commercial and cited terrorist threats. Some got warning, don't go downtown on September 11th. Confirmed. Echelon, you know that spy system that randomly listens to telephones and emails and the rest of it. Echelon gave authorities warnings of attacks months and weeks and days before. Another one, the Journal News out of New York. Police, students spoke of attacks before September 11th. Authorities are tracking numerous leads. Some people, including members of the Arab community, heard rumors of a terrorist attack on New York and Washington in the days leading up to the hijackings, law enforcement sources said. And it says they gave uh, descriptions. Do you see those two buildings? They won't be standing there next week. I mean, 
small children in English class told their teachers. <laughs> Journal News of New York. The Germans warned us. German police confirm Iranian deportee phoned warnings weeks before saying Al-Qaeda was going to attack New York. German police confirm Iranian deportee phoned warnings. Unexplained 911 explosion at WTC complex. What is this report? The government has claimed national security on the dispatch tapes, the recorded tapes of firefighters, senior firefighters with firefighting engineering degrees on the 76th to 79th up into the 84th floor saying that there were small fires, the fires were contained, the metal was not melting even in the hottest area of the fires and that bombs, their last words were, that bombs were going off. People say the government couldn't carry out a September 11th attack. It's too big, they'd get caught. They did get caught. They're just counting on you to be dumb and to go along with it. This is the dominant spin. Now let's look at the whitewash. The dominant spin we're hearing in the news is ignorant and inept FBI failed to heed warning of attacks. Why these poor guys, they just need more funding and more control. Then when lawmakers started seeking a probe of leaked September 11th intercepts, George Bush, Dick Cheney and others called them up and threatened them and said we don't want any investigations. If there's any attacks, we will say that you hindered us uh, by these investigations. And I remember them saying it all over the news. I'm sure you've heard them as well, but uh, here's just one of the articles of uh, that from Reuters. Uh, again, USA Today, secure often means secret post 911 government, stingy with information. It talks about local agencies, counties, cities, federal. They're all going secret. It's their perfect excuse to not give you any information on any subject. Government's digging in against the American people, declaring itself the owners of the population. This from USA Today as well. Government going secret, just like in Russia, just like in Nazi Germany. And we saw reports, Graham 911 study hindered. Yeah, Graham, don't try to be a whistleblower, uh, you know, a shill distracting us. We know you met with the founder and funder of Taliban and Al-Qaeda, the uh, ISI, Pakistani general, on September 11th, okay? But, you know, Graham put out reports like this. Oh, yes, our study's being, being hindered by the White House, the St. Petersburg Times out of Florida reported. Another one, LA Times. Inquiry of intelligence failures hits obstacles. CIA and Justice Department blocking Congress, even threatening people not to investigate. What do they have to hide? And now in late 2002, things really heated up. 911 inquiry delayed as staff chief is ousted in CIA dispute. The uh, CIA uh, whitewasher, the inspector they put over it, was refusing to release anything and threatening people. And who's running this investigation? Again, Porter Goss, uh, one of the intelligence chairmen, uh, Senator Graham from Florida, the two that met with the head of Pakistani intelligence as the aircraft were flying into the buildings, the guy that wired 100,000 to Muhammad Atta. We got Barbara Boxer, the gun-grabbing socialist, and Jay Rockefeller from West Virginia. I mean, what a crowd, what a crowd of, uh, of whitewashers. Now, we have good members of the House and Senate that have leaked the fact that the NSA got warnings, specific warnings, that the White House knew of plans by Al-Qaeda to fly jet airliners in the buildings, that bin Laden was in the uh, U.S. hospital right before the attacks, that Bush was on Cipro, the anthrax fighting antibiotic on September 10th with his cabinet four weeks before anthrax popped up in Boca Raton, Florida. The, all this stuff is getting leaked and getting discussed and getting talked about by staffers and members of the House and Senate. And all this intelligence was sent to them by good FBI agents and good CIA people. I've been told by people very high up in Congress that they've got unbelievable smoking guns that even blow all this away. So now the White House is even threatening arrest, threatening uh, lie detectors on senators and House members and their staffers if they leak anything else about September 11th. And the news frames it like, why there's traitors in the House and Senate. They're releasing information that can let Al-Qaeda attack us again. 
then you read on in the article, it concerns leaks of government prior knowledge and involvement. So the executives coming over to the legislative, bossing them around like a dictator, threatening people who have valiantly leaked information of government involvement in the attacks. This is from the Washington Post. Probe of Hill leaks on 911 is intensified. So think about it, folks. We have the CIA following Al-Qaeda out of the country and then making sure that the U.S. embassies gave them visas back in and the House and Senate leaked this information. They leaked the fact that the NSA got warnings, specific warnings of attacks coming against the World Trade Center. And what does the government do? They go and threaten people in Congress with arrest and try to make them take lie detector tests so they can charge them with treason. The legislative is supposedly separate from the executive and just as powerful. But that's not happening. Now in the, under the name of protecting the homeland, people shouldn't leak that the executive ran the attacks. Think about that. I mean, you couldn't write a science fiction book. You couldn't write a novel. You couldn't write a spy thriller like this. People wouldn't believe it. And on top of this, what did Dick Cheney, what did George Bush, what did uh, other CIA pomps and minions say on the news. They said publicly, if you frustrate us and divert us with congressional investigations of government prior knowledge and involvement, if you do this, you are ensuring another attack. Dick Cheney said it on Meet the Press. This is out of the London Guardian. Prepare for attack, Cheney tells U.S. Perhaps nuclear. He said a bigger attack is a sure thing, not a question of if, but when? Think about that. He specifically said on television, if you continue to frustrate and divert us with these investigations of prior knowledge, you're ensuring an even larger attack. Folks, it took him 72 hours to even cover part of the information. I'm trying to do it uh, here in this tour de force, uh, this rambling rampage in, uh, in two hours. But U.S. government officials, former officers, a U.S. Air Force officer, uh, U.S. Air Force uh, captain met and said the evidence is clear. The U.S. government carried out the attack. This is a mainstream national Portugal newspaper covering a 72-hour press conference. 72 hours to show the evidence. Just go to Infowars.com, look at the government prior knowledge section. You know, I want you to see all of it. Throughout this film, I've been telling you to check out the information we're bringing forward. That's because it's only the tip of the iceberg, and I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt that the information we're bringing forward is documented. You and your family are under attack. World government controls America, and they engineered September 11th to get a police state agenda through. So stand up against them. Now let's go through this quick now. Taliban melt away before army sweep. London Guardian. What happened? Well, the commander of the biggest U.S. search for Taliban and Al-Qaeda fugitives, Colonel James Huggins, commanding officer of the 3rd Brigade Task Force of the 82nd Airborne Division, said that every time they went into a village, people had been warned to escape. The Taliban and Al-Qaeda, it was clear, had people on the inside warning them of when Special Forces Command was going to be sending an operation. In fact, I saw a story in the San Francisco Chronicle where a top Air Force general said, what's going on here? We had top Al-Qaeda in our sights ten times. Their convoys, Mua, Omar, and others. And every time we did, every time we requested uh, authorization from the CIA to bomb, just like Vietnam, they wouldn't let them do it. That was because that was their operatives, their, their Al-Qaeda, their Taliban, who were sent in to destabilize and to give the U.S. a pretext to move in and take control of the oil fields. And we have other evidence. 6,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda were flown out to safety as Kandahar fell. As the, as the capital of Taliban and Al-Qaeda operations fell, 6,000 Taliban and Al-Qaeda leaders were flown out to safety into Pakistan with the Pakistani ISI chief. The same guy who had been meeting with the heads of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees on the morning of September 11th over breakfast. The same House and Senate Intelligence Committee chairman that issued these whitewashes. And when it came out in Fox News, 
and the LA Times, and when it came out in the New Yorker magazine, and, and, and all these different places, that the U.S. government had flown the leadership of Taliban and Al-Qaeda out to safety and dropped them off in Pakistan to then start a war with India so the Karlal group could sell weapons to both sides, so the Bushes and Bin Ladens could sell weapons to India and Pakistan, you know, moving the war to another place, moving their troublemakers to another place, their, their pretext makers to, to another place. When that news came out, the media brought it out. The, the government didn't deny that they'd flown Taliban and Al-Qaeda leaders out to safety as Kandahar fell on C-130s, U.S. government aircraft, U.S. pilots. They didn't deny that. You know what they said? They said, oh, it was an accident. Just like everything else was an accident we've covered. And you're saying, wait a minute, who were the people getting tortured at Camp X-Ray in Guantanamo Bay or all the articles about how they fly these so-called terrorists to Egypt for torture by U.S. forces? Who are the people? It's theater, folks. They're goat herders. They're the front-line people. You heard about the Arabs in the lines behind, the little goat herders who would point guns at them and make them fight the U.S., make them fight the Northern Alliance? Those poor kids are the ones that got captured and put in these big trailers who suffocated. 3,000 of them were massacred by U.S. and uh, Northern Alliance communist troops. These are low-level goat herders, low-level privates, and they're getting flown all over the world to be tortured, and the media reports on it. They're just playing the part of the enemy unwittingly, while the CIA operatives that got them to fight are living in the lap of luxury, sitting in hot tubs. It's disgusting, folks. L.A. Times, something I told you in my first film before this article came out. No leaders of Al-Qaeda found at Guantanamo. No leaders. They were all flown out by the U.S. government. Authorities accused the Lang WTC investigation. I already covered how the bombs were going off and how the firefighters reported two small fires up on the uh, 76th to 84th floor. Their last words, bombs are going off. Uh, the government's declared national security on those tapes. Well, yeah, they better. And they've claimed national security, not on the flight recorders they say were damaged, but on the air traffic control tapes, they had 58 minutes to stop the second plane. They had 70 plus minutes to stop the Pentagon plane, but of course they didn't. Authorities accused of delaying WTC investigation. New York Post. And who's accusing them? Engineers, fire scientists, experts, victims, relatives, who yesterday marched around the White House. Mayor, September 11th records should be secret. Mayor Bloomberg, Associated Press, September 11th records should be secret. And what records is he talking about? Police dispatch tapes, firefighter dispatch tapes. Because they have been leaked now by good officers and good firefighters, confirmed New York Daily Press and other reports that bombs were going on. And the news has interviewed Lou Caccioli and other firefighters. The head of the firefighter union said that they were warned not to go to work that day and that bombs were going off. You know something, I've made two films since September 11th. And in both the emergency release, a special report I put out for a limited time, and then, of course, my big official 911, The Road to Tyranny film, which we're very proud of, I analyzed the USA Patriot Act. I went through the subsections. Of course, the USA Patriot Act is H.R. 3162. Congress passed it with, without even being able to read it. Ron Paul and others have been on the record saying that. Multiple congressmen and women have been on the record saying they were not even allowed to read it, uh, but were just told to pass it. And the White House threatened that if there's another terrorist attack and you haven't passed this, we'll use it in local campaigns against you to say that you aided the terrorist. Uh, Ron Paul refused to pass it, saying that he was being terrorized to do it, uh, but uh, a majority of congressmen and women did. Now, after September 11th, uh, I reported in both my films what H.R. 3162 did, a bill that no one in Congress was even allowed to read. I went in after the passage, got a hold of it, looked at the subsections, where it said they'd have warrantless searches of your house, your business, they'd take whatever they wanted, including records, order you not to tell anyone that they were there, that American citizens for any crime, any misdemeanor or felony, uh, any violation of federal or state law would uh, not be able to have lawyers or face our accusers or even have a trial by jury, that we could be indefinitely held. And it clearly said that the new definition of terrorism was any action that endangered human life uh, that violated federal or state law. That was Section uh, 802 of the USA Patriot Act. Despite the fact that I had read the legislation, I was still stunned September 5th when the Associated Press 
mirrored my analysis of the USA Patriot Act. And I read from Newsday, from the Associated Press, overview of changes to legal rights. Some of the fundamental changes to Americans' legal rights by the Bush administration and the USA Patriot Act following the terror attacks. Freedom of association. Government may monitor religious or political institutions without suspecting criminal activity to assist terror investigations. Came out that Denver, Colorado, and many other cities have been doing this for decades. And it's not just uh, you know so-called radical groups that are being spied on. It's the Kiwanis Club, the NRA, the most innocent groups you can imagine. Does that intimidate you Americans? It should infuriate you to expose the terrorists that are keeping these lists on Americans. Freedom of information. Government has closed once public immigration hearings, has secretly detained hundreds of people without charges, and has encouraged bureaucrats to resist public records requests. Oh yeah, they're shutting down the Freedom of Information Act, you name it, on anything you can imagine. Freedom of speech. Government may prosecute librarians or keepers of any other records if they tell people the government subpoenaed information related to a terror investigation. Oh, it's more than just gag orders and subpoenas. Legislation clearly reads, they can sneak and peek, break into your house, take whatever they want, and then order you to never tell anyone. Right to legal representation. Government may monitor federal prison jailhouse conversations between attorneys and clients and deny lawyers to Americans accused of crimes. Not terrorism, crimes. Because now crime has been defined as terrorism. You've seen the ads where they've equated the war on drugs with the war on terrorism. Freedom from unreasonable searches, the Fourth Amendment. Government may search and seize Americans' papers and effects without probable cause to assist terror investigations. Right to a speedy and public trial, government may jail Americans indefinitely without a trial. Government may jail Americans indefinitely without a trial? Period. Not for terror, for anything. Not for foreigners, as Ashcroft said. He said, you're with the terrorist if you say we're taking American citizens' rights. And we're like, excuse me, we've read the legislation. It clearly states that. No, no. Those that talk about phantoms of lost liberty. You're only helping the terrorist. You will lose your liberty if you say this open threat. To those who scare peace-loving people with phantoms of lost liberty, my message is this. Your tactics only aid terrorists, for they erode our national unity and diminish our resolve. Charges of kangaroo courts and shredding the Constitution give new meaning to the term fog of war. Since lives and liberties depend on clarity, not obfuscation, and upon reason, not hyperbole. Let me take this opportunity to be clear. My message to America this morning then is this. If you fit this definition of a terrorist, fear the United States, for you will lose your liberty. Right to liberty. Americans may be jailed without being charged or being able to confront witnesses against them. Oh, jail you without charges. Get rid of habeas corpus. And on top of that, don't let you face the witnesses brought against you. Absolutely incredible. Can you imagine things like this happening before September 11th? That was the only pretext they needed to promote implantable microchips, helicopters, face scanning cameras, national ID cards, FEMA camps. It's all in the news now. They're telling you it's for your safety while they leave the border wide open. You think maybe we're giving up our freedom voluntarily? Absolutely. We have no choice. We have no choice. We have no choice. FBI asked lawmakers to take lie detector tests in September 11th leak investigation. Again, they're going after people for leaking government prior knowledge and involvement. They're going after whistleblowers. And under Homeland Security, you can't report sexual harassment in any federal agency that's under it. And it's not 22 agencies, it's 102. You cannot report embezzlement. You are the property of the government under Homeland Security. In an amazing admission, Ari Fleischner admitted White House press secretary admitted, why are you putting out all these warnings that we're about to be attacked any day by nukes or smallpox? And he said, well, maybe it's because all this government prior knowledge news. He actually said that at a press conference. Washington Times, alerts tied to memo flap, putting out fake alerts to distract from the FBI agents going forward and the knowledge of uh, the information of government prior knowledge coming out. And then the whitewashes, did Bush do enough? we got to give him more power. It's just an accident that September 11th took place. Uh, report cites shortcomings at FBI, CIA, NSA. 
And the people putting out these reports are the very folks helping to run the operation of September 11th, the heads of these disgusting intelligence committees. Bush, CIA, FBI didn't communicate well before 911. Now we need a domestic CIA. That's what they're all reporting now. NSA didn't share key data September 11th. Bush concedes CIA, FBI fault, but doubts attacks were avoidable. Oh, yeah, sure. You know, again, it's, oh, yeah, there is prior knowledge. See, they know you're hearing about all this, but it's just prior knowledge. Remember, they keep trying that. Bush asked Daschle to limit September 11th probes. Remember that? And Daschle tries to polarize things and make it a Republican-Democrat thing. These guys are all puppets at the top. Uh, Bill Clinton could have arrested bin Laden. The Sudanese offered to do it, offered to give our government the names of al-Qaeda in this country. That's all confirmed. Clinton answered by shooting cruise missiles at them. Now, there are over a dozen FBI agents that I know of personally who are saying it's government involvement in the attacks. I just want to point out that Rowley, again, is a shill, is a distraction. She's on the periphery just saying the government screwed up and needs more funding. She really wasn't even involved in the whole thing. She's a distraction and a diversion. What do you do when you got all these real people coming forward? You put a shill out like her to distract. Ooh, here's the big hot tip. Ooh, here's the big revelation. And then it's just some side issue. A real FBI whistleblower, though, uh, reported that her superiors must have been working for al-Qaeda. Again, we turn that around the right direction. It's the FBI runs al-Qaeda. And of course, her name is Sybil Edmonds. And she's filed a uh, lawsuit saying her superiors ordered her not to stop al-Qaeda when they knew that they were planning to fly aircraft in the buildings. And she's saying, why is the Justice Department and uh, the FBI blocking, uh, blocking uh, her deposition of her superiors? Why are they protecting them? Because her superiors are following orders, honey. That's why. Um, and who's involved in this whole 911 whitewash that, that, that they conducted? Uh, not just people that were meeting with the spy chiefs involved in running the attack, but also the head of the September 11th probe allegedly obstructed Danforth's Waco inquiry. Former FBI counsel uh, held onto papers and obstructed justice. I mean, what a collection of people. He was also involved in the Ruby Ridge cover-up. All right, folks, now let's look at what the globalists are getting domestically out of the fear they generated with their attack on the American people of September 11th. This is the 911 police state section. Homeland Security, the Department of Homeland Security. I have read the 24-page synopsis put out by the White House in June of 2002. I have watched multiple hearings they've conducted in Congress and out of Congress. It is the total takeover of state and local police it is the takeover of Child Protective Services. It is the takeover of uh, the different uh, gun control organizations. It is the takeover of private corporations. There's discussions of putting troops in factories. I mean, it, it, it's just total Nazi Germany, total Russia. That's what Homeland Security is. Check it out for yourself. And Bush has been terrorizing Congress to pass this, saying, pass it or you're going to cause more terror attacks and then I'm going to blame you with these new terror attacks. Now look, terrorists use terror to get a political outcome. Who's getting a police state? Who's getting control out of the attack? Bush warns Congress on Homeland Bill. Billionaire predicts nuclear attack. Associated Press, Warren Buffett says a nuclear attack is a virtual certainty unless we give up our rights. Who are the terrorists here? Who are telling us to give our rights up? Ridge says terrorism is permanent. Get ready for more terrorism. Not a question of it, but when Americans will have to give their rights up. Meanwhile, they leave our borders wide open and do nothing to protect the American people. Who are the real terrorists? And then they announce the TIPS program that was set up years ago for gun confiscation and cattle tailing and reporting those that are using CIA drugs. 
uh, Washington Times, Plan Volunteer Informant Corps elicits 1984 fear. Your cable guy, uh, your school teacher, your, 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 your auto mechanic, all being your mailman, all to be spies. And by the way, when they announced this, there was a huge backlash. They claimed they were getting rid of it. They're liars. It's on the FEMA website right now. Millions of Americans tattletale spies. Good. We're standing up strong and telling them that they're the terrorists. U.S. planning to recruit one in 24 Americans as citizen spies, Sydney Morning Herald. I'm sorry, that was just in phase one in 2000. I've read right off FEMA's own website that runs this, folks. It is one in 10 Americans to be spies. That is double what the East German Stasi had. And you're thinking, well, at least we're not as bad as Russia. Here's the Moscow Times where they train kids with AK-47s to be tax collectors and gun grabbers at a young age in the public schools. Well, now I've got reports they're turning the public schools into military training camps for gun confiscation. Today, they need a different sort of prodigy. Here's ABC's Mike Lee. 6.30 a.m., wake-up time. 139 children, ages 10 to 14. This is no ordinary boarding school. Welcome to the Russian Tax Police Children's School. I came to this school to get a good education, says Andre, and to become a real man to learn about self-defense and fist fighting. There has never been a school like this, taking 11-year-old children and teaching them the finer points of collecting taxes and teaching them to do this. These are their role models, Russia's rough and ready tax police. They knock on the door, you know it's time to pay your taxes. They wear black masks and are famous for beating up tax cheats in the Russian mafia. Their motto, we have guns and we know how to use them. At the tax police school, many of the children are orphans. Others are from broken homes. They get decent housing here, regular meals, and a guaranteed high school education with a very strange twist. How many of you think you will get in a gunfight with criminals when you grow up? How many of you are afraid of doing that? <laughs> I like this profession, says 10-year-old Masha, because we have to bring order to our country at some point. If there's a shootout, says Kolya, I'll just use a machine gun. Between classes, they act just like other children. But they are being prepared for a life on the front lines of Russia's war against organized crime. A few months from now, they will begin training with police guns. Mike Lee, ABC News, Moscow. That's our report on World News Tonight. We'll be back at night. Here's the Philadelphia Inquirer, folks, mainstream newspaper, not to be confused with the uh, National Inquirer. This is the Philadelphia Inquirer. With Homeland Security in mind, summer camp trains teens. They're trained how to run checkpoints, how to confiscate guns, how to chase adults through the woods with bloodhounds, with the police to aid Homeland Security. It's called Secure Corps, a subgroup of FEMA, set up three years ago, two years before September 11th. Years ago, I found this on the Army's website, and I made a big deal about it on the air. They, it was classified in the 80s. They declassified it in the 90s. Americans are already in 12 camps working in slave labor. One camp saves $3.5 million a year. Fort Bliss, Fort Dix, Camp Atterbury, Fort Lee. Americans in camps, civilian inmate labor. And we'll put a link up on the... Uh, on InfoWars.com for you, or you can just go directly to the website and read this on the Army website for yourself. Here's another one. Again, you're doubting me. I remember years ago reporting this. I've been to the FEMA camps in my police state films. We show you up close video of Marines trying to confiscate your guns and admitting it on tape. Before September 11th, this is now after LA Times, Camps for Citizens, Ashcroft's Hellish Vision, Attorney General shows himself as a menace to liberty. Again, ladies and gentlemen, he promised you this would never be for American citizens. He said that if you said it was for American citizens, that you were aiding Al-Qaeda and that you would lose your liberty. 
What does that mean? We're not taking your rights, but if, we, but if you say we're taking your rights, we'll take your rights. See, that's double-sided propaganda. That's saying, if you're dumb out there, we're not taking your rights, because we know you're dumb and you won't check it out. If you are smart and know we are, we're taking your rights away. He said that to Congress. These people saying there's phantoms of lost liberty. Hey, buddy, I've read the USA Patriot Act. It's the end of America. It's all about American citizens. And now people have read what you've done. You're building your giant FEMA camps. I've got the reports right here. FEMA just put out a bid for three one million man camps. You say, oh, they'll never get away with that. If the government blows up more stuff, they will. They've already put it in the minds of most Americans that give up your liberty, you get security. When in reality, you get tyranny. See how they're marching you down this road, telling you bigger attacks are coming as you give them more power? Wall Street Journal shredding the Constitution. At least they got it right. The fact that America is basically ending. Secret detentions violate American values. Seattle uh, Times, mainstream news. American citizens, folks, and foreigners getting grabbed. Ashcroft seeks to abuse the use of secret court. Now, there's no way to abuse a secret court because of the whole thing. A secret court itself is an abuse. Judge orders release of 911 arrestee names, but then later said, oh, you don't have to really do that. That's okay. You don't have to tell us if they're American or if they're foreigners. You can just arrest whoever you want and you can go ahead and execute them in secret. By the way, they said they'll execute you in secret. Again, that doesn't intimidate me. That makes me angry, folks, because they carried out the attacks and now they're doing this to us. U.S. Def uh, defies judge on enemy combatant status. Washington Post. Again, they're saying that the Army can designate any American citizen as an enemy combatant and then never charge him with anything. The end of habeas corpus. Here's another one. Bush official. One more terror attack on U.S. goodbye civil rights. Top Bush official, while speaking to a Detroit crowd, said one more attack and that's going to be the end of our civil rights. And who did Bush appoint? It was somebody appointed to the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. Peter Crisall. Look at this, folks. Mainstream news. Unbelievable. One more terror attack. Here's another one out of Newsmax. Bush would send SWAT teams to journalists' homes. CIA expert says leaks of classified information must stop. What leaks? Leaks that the government was behind the attacks. We've got to do whatever it takes, whether it means sending SWAT teams to journalists' homes to stop these leaks. You are with us, or you're with the terrorists. And if you're with the terrorists, you will face the consequences. FBI begins to visit libraries. Again, this too is out of the Washington Post. And by the way, it's not just libraries that they are uh, visiting, my friends. In the USA Patriot Act, in Section 213, it's the warrantless sneak and peek. It means your house, your business, libraries, records at your business. They come in, take what they want, don't even tell you they were there after they take stuff, anything they want. Or they can come and tell you they were there and tell you it's a national security treason charge if you tell anyone that they were ever there. And they're not using them on Islamics or terrorists. They're using them on the American people. There's another one, suspending habeas corpus. Getting rid of habeas corpus for American citizens. Foundations are in place for martial law in the U.S. Sydney Morning Herald. It's all over the foreign news. FEMA preparing for mass destruction attacks on U.S. cities. FEMA says we're about to be attacked by Iraq at any time and that millions will die. We've got to build giant camps for everyone. Again, the gas chambers are for delousing and for your safety. FBI objects to the Constitution. Mm. This out of a Denver courtroom saying the Constitution only aids terrorists. The jury asked for copies of the amendments to the U.S. Constitution concerning the deliberation. Uh, and the judge overruled the motion to read the amendments to the jury uh, and said the Constitution is a terrorist document. This is America, folks. FBI objects to the Constitution. Mainstream news. Meanwhile, they're telling you to give up all your liberty. Think about this. They're telling you to give up all your liberty for security. The borders are wide open. They're funding every terrorist organization you can imagine. Bill Clinton transferred two nuclear reactors to North Korea that produce fissile material to produce warheads. They will arm the hereditary dictator of North Korea who kills millions of his own people with nuclear weapons material. 
but they want your guns, America. And now, just in case you think it's just Bill Clinton, George Bush is going to transfer another four nuclear reactors to Kim Jong-il. Police state cashless society control grid. Quickly, Popular Science put out an artist rendering of the new card, new national ID card. It has an all-seeing Illuminati eye on the front of it, and Winston Smith, the dehumanized character from 1984, is the name of the subject. This is a sick joke. They know most people won't even know what they're talking about. The article is for the national ID card, cashless society, taxation control grid, but it has an all-seeing Illuminati eye on it, and the name of the man is Winston Smith. Here's another one, BBC, Burma adopting a e-passport and driver's license to buy and sell, and it has a microchip and a face scan in it. Guess who funded the operation? The article says the United Nations. By the way, the United Nations at a population control summit uh, just a few months ago called for a world ID card to tax, trace, and control all of us. Retailers test paying by fingerprint, USA today all over the country thumb scanning to buy and sell and they talk about making you do it to buy and sell in the near future uh, reviving a de facto national id card again we already have national id cards 38 states already thumb scan or face scanning a driver's license and your information's already been given to the grocery stores which is uploaded to the national security agency all of this confirmed in fact here's fox news uh, they say Store customer cards, a source for the FBI, then they admit major change routinely upload your, all your purchasing records off credit card and discount cards, upload this to NSA. They were even doing that, by the way, before the attack. Police asked stores to take fingerprints. Arlington police were asking businesses to voluntarily participate in a program to take customers' fingerprints if they pay by check. Read on into the article, that means by credit card or debit card as well and they claim it's going to stop fraud. But we know that the city of Arlington has taken money by some of the big biometric companies. Because who's going to want to get ink all over their hands? Oh no, they've got $100 hand scanners for you. And it just so happens these technologies were developed by the Defense Department and transferred to companies like Visionics and North American Morpho Systems. Houston Chronicle, it's kind of touch and go. Kroger's and HEB food stores putting in thumb scanners, plan to go statewide in the state of Texas. You better boycott and protest that, ladies and gentlemen. Cashless society, inevitable. A boost to globalist taxers. Again, the UN and the OECD just met in The Hague of the Netherlands and in Washington and called for thumb scanning and face scanning to buy and sell or national ID cards to have a global tax so you can't escape an 85% tax level which they are pushing for. Don't think it'll happen? Yes, it will incrementally. Shops try chips for tracking every move by a client. Monitoring system, note what uh, catches customers' eyes. This report says that Walmart, Sears, Target, everybody, starting next year, is going to put tiny three-cent microchips in the clothes, the shoes, Campbell's suit cams, Kraft, uh, Procter & Gamble. So it's going to be all in the clothes, all over your body. And when you leave, they'll scan your name, whether you like it or not, on to the purchase. And they're going to have radio readers around town. Walmart's already wired a major city in Arkansas with this system, uh, the Washington Post reported. Again, this is the uh, Washington Post, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, this was posted in the San Francisco Chronicle. So, uh, how are they promoting microchips? I'm sure I don't have to tell you that they're all over the news saying we've had kidnappings, put microchips in the children. And I made films about that years ago and got laughed at, and now it's all over the news. Put microchips in the children. For their safety. Why, we've been doing it with doggies for years. Do you know how to keep your children safe? We'll tell you tonight. In the next year, you'll be able to use your teen's cell phone to locate them 24 7. Younger children will get a small global positioning device hidden in their wristwatch or backpack. And just around the next high tech corner, an electronic chip like this that can be implanted under your kid's skin. Let's say children in your community start wearing wristwatches with GPS devices in them. Can't that only be a good thing for the community if it keeps children safe? <laughs> I would love that. I mean, what's a parent's fear? I think it's a parent's obligation to 
ensure that their children have a chance to mature, to grow, to realize their potential. And if it means it's big brother, so be it. You got to do what you got to do to keep your kids safe. Civil libertarians, eat your hearts out. Civil libertarians, eat your hearts out. Applied digital solutions could track human beings by satellite. All right. We got the Van Dams, we got this little girl Elizabeth Smart, we got this girl in Pennsylvania, uh, we got uh, Samantha Runyon, one after, we got this other little girl, one after another, after another, after another, after another, and parents around America saying, we can't even allow our kids to play in the front yard. Is there anything, uh, technologically speaking, that they can do that could help in a situation like a kidnapping? Is there, for example, a microchip, a watch, a tracking device we can use for our kids. We are working on a product that we have called internally a PLD. PLD stands for Personal Locating Device, which is an implantable GPS for which our company owns a patent and can be implanted surgically in the clavicle area of a child or someone that you are interested in tracking. It is an impl the first implantable microchip for humans that has multiple security, financial, and healthcare applications. One thing I would just suggest, I'm just an outside soon-to-be investor. I love this idea, by the way, Scott. I think this is a great. Thank you, Sean. Put it in earrings. Put it in a cross. Make it smaller, maybe not implantable. And I think let parents choose. It's not the government, I, so I like it. But w we're currently working on those applications. Good. Do and I, I hear it? music? So thank you for yeah. having me. Give me a cut, Scott. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> all, the, all the best. Thank you. Thank I you. Think it's going to make some money. Great product. I really do. Thank Fort Worth Star Telegram. Fearful parents turn to privacy devices, gets into the microchips. Uh, this report uh, comes from the Air Force website. It was also uh, on the Federation of American Scientists. They explain how they're going to get you to accept implantable microchips. It says the PR implications, how they're going to use the media to condition the public to take microchips. This was from January of 2000. Rental car companies may be tracking you via GPS. And now they've admitted that most uh, new cars have satellite tracker boxes already in them. They've started taxing people in England with the satellite tracker boxes. And I've read the federal documents where they plan to start taxing and tracking us with satellite tracking boxes in our cars here as well. And uh, in Los Angeles and north of LA, they're going to make you carry a transponder tracker. That was in the New York Times. I mean, this is getting too out of control. College seeks security in thumbs. Colleges to buy and sell, to get their lunches, to get into their libraries, got a thumb scan. Again, training of generations. They're doing this with the junior high and middle school and elementary school uh, kids. They're making them thumb scan to get their lunches, training them for the cashless society. No cash allowed, getting them into the control grid. I also wanted to talk just to warn you about the hundreds of reports confirming dozens of vaccines full of cancer viruses. That's why cancer's up by four hundred percent. This is out of the National Post of Canada. Cancer link to vaccine foul by monkey virus. Vaccine cancer scare. This out of the New York Post. And again, the UN says they want to control our populations. DNA test links autism to measles, mumps, and rubella. They have found it in autistic children, almost all autistic children. Autism was unheard of before the MMR shot. Now they found this antibody, a hormone just so happens to be in the shot that attacks the cerebral cortex. Normally it just causes a lowering of IQ in the child, but the government wants a total loss of IQ, ladies and gentlemen. DNA test links autism to MMR. Uh, this is out of the Sunday Herald. Scotland on Sunday, blood test link MMR to autism. Hundreds of top reports, ladies and gentlemen, from all over the world. Here's another one, virus engineered to sterilize pest, Washington Times. Reason I covered this article from August, because years ago I saw articles about the tetanus shots being used to sterilize third world women. And now you look at our, our people in, in, in the West, no matter what color they are, they're losing um, their fertility, 75% sperm counts down, women way down, fertility way down. Look at this. Look at this again. Virus engineered to sterilize pests. Exactly how the UN got caught doing it, they're now doing it for other mammals. And they see us as pests. Vaccinations from Austin clinics could be bad. This is just where I live. You know, this stuff is everywhere, folks. It's out of the Houston Chronicle. There's no place to hide. 
an amazing story. They now have ultrasonic radar that can look through your walls and look at the ventricles of your heart. Wired Magazine. Five years ago, I saw reports of this. They're giving them to police departments, uh, the older versions that just see a black and white image of you in your home. Crisp and clean image. Folks, this is a violation of every canon of a free society. And since they've gotten all these technologies, have we been safe? No, we've been attacked by terrorists. Feds open total tech spy system, also from Wired News. They call it the Information Total Information Awareness Network. And their symbol is the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati. Right off of DARPA's own website. Delaware police compile database of future suspects. I interviewed the city council member. They're compiling names of the Kiwanis Club, of, uh, of the Second Amendment groups. Uh, it came out in Denver, Colorado, the Denver Post. 3,000 plus uh, 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 people's names, 300 plus groups. They had photos. They had files on Kiwanis, NRA, liberal preachers, conservative preachers, on everybody. They won't control our borders, but they got files on the American people because we're the cattle. We're the producers. I'm not trying to scare you here, folks. It's gone so far, we got to tell the truth. Delaware Police Database on Future Subjects, People Who've Never Committed Crimes, Associated Press, Pre-Crime, U.S. Report for Tales of Brave New World. I talked to these folks. U.S. National Science Foundation says we will all be implanted with microchips in our brains in the next 20 years. Same thing the Air Force the Federation of American Scientists said, this from the Sydney Morning Herald. It says we will all have chips put in our heads. This is the U.S. government's plan. They've done everything they said they'd do. Now, they blow up cities with nukes, which they've said is going to happen. They claim it's some shadowy, you know, Goldstein enemy right out of 1984. Bill Joy, co-owner of Sun Microsystems, author of the Java language, worth about eight billion bucks. Wired Magazine says the elite plans to kill us. 80% of us, so they have access to live ascension technologies. Why the future doesn't need us. Why humans are an endangered species. Again, Bill Joy, multi-billionaire, having a pang of conscience, telling you they plan to kill you. Ted Turner, Prince Philip, they've all said it. I put that in my other films. Eight Circuit Court of Appeals rules that they can have unlimited force drugging of people that haven't even been charged for unlimited period of times to prepare you to be charged. And they've been grabbing in test cases middle class doctors and others and forced drugging them. This put out by the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons. City to tax rainwater from North Carolina to Washington State. Cities are now saying they're going to tax you for the use of rainwater with meters. I'm not kidding. Mainstream news. Just talk about total tyranny. Talk about Big Brother, folks. This is it. Did you ever think you'd see them on the nightly news saying you need to take implantable microchips in your brain? Well, they're now doing it. Will military enforce domestic law? Bush, Ridge, look at suspending 1878 Posse Comitatus Act. And they've been all over the news saying that. Again, we have 700,000 police. Why do we need military? Because they are a force that takes on the general public. They are not a force that goes out and fights terrorists. Administration moles whether to give military more power within U.S. borders. Associated Press. Now again, I made films about this in 97, 98, 99, 2000. I warned you, I said terrorism was coming. They were going to spring these troops on us. Now they're getting rid of posse commentators. Meanwhile, there's thousands less border patrol agents on the southern border because the government is cutting their pay and then raising the pay for other federal positions on purpose. Our borders are a sieve. Immigration bill offers felons a second chance. And not just aggravated felons convicted of murder, rape, robbery, pornography, child pornography, arson. They want them to come here as illegal aliens and to become members of the military. I mean, yes, you're not living in the twilight zone. This stuff is really happening. Because you said it says legal aliens, but you read in the bill, it's illegal aliens too. So if you're a felon, they want you. Again, Hitler wanted criminals working for him. So did Stalin. And the British brought in foreign troops, Hessians. Why? Because they'll shoot at people, folks. Foreigners find military fast track to citizenship. Again, more on that. Here's a key story. The Globe and Mail. 
Landry sees more fluid Canadian-U.S. border. Pan-American Union under Northcom actually says it. Here's the uh, Toronto Star. Primers, governors promote open border. North America will lose out to Europe in a new global economy unless Canada and the United States open their borders and create a Pan-American Union. Here's the Globe and Mail. Canada-U.S. near troop deal. Washington and Ottawa are close to a deal allowing U.S. soldiers to cross the border and operate on Canadian soil in the event of a terrorist attack. The proposal, revealed by Defense Minister John McCollum yesterday, would likewise let Canadian troops take part in the anti-terror operations south of the border. It says Canadians are wor worried about losing their sovereignty. Yeah, Americans don't even know about this. The Army War College report calls for Mexican and Canadian troops to, quote, patrol America and deal with American terrorists. And now they've got children's video games that the Pentagon puts out where you kill American militia members. San Diego, folks. Associated Press. Army seeks recruits through soldier video games. Who do you fight in the game? You fight the American militia. Terrorist. American militia. You see that? The guys with, you know, a feed hat on. You know, just a country boy. Sitting there defending America, so he's evil. And uh, guess who the good guys are? SAS, United Kingdom, GSG9, Germany, GIGN, France. Uh, here on the front, who are the best guys in the game? Spitznats, Russian. Look at this. Spitznats, Russian. They're the good guys. New law lets Army get info on high school kids. Your psychological tests, your scores, everything, without your parents knowing. Again, all this through Homeland Security. Come on, folks. U.S. sends suspects to face torture. What are they training your children to be? They take the patsies, the fall guys, for torture. Our, our troops are training on torturing people. They admit they're torturing them. Soaring achievement in spying. Uh, Microfly to infiltrate terrorists. Weapons sends messages loud and clear. New sound weapons being given to police. Marine training continues. Uh, British force field uh, protects armored personnel carriers, tanks, zaps, grenades. Again, there's all these different reports. Th this is America. MSNBC, the answer to protect America? What's their answer? Domestic CIA. Wake up, ladies and gentlemen. I could go for 100 hours here and not cover it all. I, but I don't just have the articles. I've been there. I've videotaped it. I've seen the New World Order in action. We're under attack. Warn everybody. Warn everybody you know. Warn them now. The government engineered the attacks. They had the military set up to go after the American people decades ago. They've been slowly, incrementally setting this up. Now most of the top video games, even the games the government puts out, you go out and kill Americans that resist the government. Your kids are simulating this in their minds. This is all set up and admitted. But we can speak out. We're the people. There's been a great backlash against Ashcroft and his camps and the TIPS program and all of this. The problem is they're going to blow more stuff up and say, see, you got to give us all your rights. Don't, don't listen to the civil libertarians. Don't listen to the folks that you know say we deserve freedom. They're selling you tyranny. Check out the information for yourself. Go to InfoWars. Thanks for watching this presentation. Uh, it's frustrating for me to have to go this fast and to know that I've only covered a small percentage of the information. If you'd like to learn more, be sure and visit my website daily. It's InfoWars.com. And it's better than any newspaper out there I've found. We, we update the site with mainstream, alternative news, uh, government documents, you name it, from around the globe. But bottom line, folks, America and the world is under attack by the globalists. They're using terrorism and the fear of terrorism to destroy our sovereignty, bring in foreign troops, to militarize our police, and to turn our military against us. Every nightmare the old timers ever talked about is now happening. And how did those old timers years ago know that all this was going to happen? Because they were reading the State Department's own documents. They were reading foreign affairs put out by the Council on Foreign Relations. They had watched world history, and they could see the changes that were already taking place. America's a great land, and she's strong. But there's too many wolves in sheep's clothing pulling at her heart, stabbing at her innards, 
We're losing our country. We're losing America. And our children won't grow up in a free country. They'll grow up in a high-tech police state. So understand me, folks. The government is behind the terrorist attacks. The First World Trade Center, Oklahoma City, the Second World Trade Center. And they're telling us more terrorist attacks are coming. And that we've got to give up our liberty if we're going to have any security. Folks, that's a fraud. We know who has the motive for September 11th. We know who's getting the pipelines and shipping in the opium. We know who's selling the weapons with the Carlisle Group, the Bushes, and the Bin Ladens. We know who's getting the police state here domestically and all these big un-American corporations that are out there promoting it. So start researching this information. Make it a priority in your life because whether you like it or not, or whether you believe what I've said here today, it's going to affect you because they're planning more terrorist attacks. They've told you it's not a question of if but when. More terrorists coming. The only way to neutralize the globalist is by exposing that they are behind the terrorist attacks. Then if they pull it, it'll backfire on them. I believe that they're at the point of no return. They're arrogant and in their ivory towers, they just can't help themselves. But the good news is, I do radio interviews across this country every day. And I do my own syndicated broadcast. And frankly, almost no one calls in that disagrees anymore. And these folks know what they're talking about. They're informed, they're educated, and they're concerned, and they're spreading the word. So be part of history. Help spread the word. We're not alone. Help warn your neighbors. Make copies of this film. I authorize you to for nonprofit educational purposes. Help save America. Terrorism is being used to destroy America. Terrorism is about a political outcome. And look at what the politicians are doing for their banker masters. So please help save America. Have the courage to spread the word. Because if you don't, no one will. And America will most certainly die. And we all live here. We can't afford to do that to our children and grandchildren. So battle for the republic. Please get out there and help us save this country. God bless you all. I'm Alex Jones, signing off. To order additional copies of this film or other titles, please call toll-free 1-888-253-3139. That's 888-253-3139. Or simply visit our websites at infowars.com and net for further information.